Today we're going to be removing the engine and transmission from a Toyota Prius. Now taking a look under the Prius's hood here, you can see we've got the internal combustion engine over here on this side and the transmission which is buried down underneath this inverter. you got the air box on the top here as well as a bunch of other reservoirs for different fluid types and the fuse box over on that side. In order to clear things up here, we're going to need to remove a few things such as the inverter itself, maybe the fan radiator assembly with this bar here, the air box as well as the wiper cowl. Now up at the front here I've kind of cheated and loosed off a few things already such as this air box which just pops off with its filter and this just comes off of its assembly here. Got the mass airflow sensor over here. And I've already gone underneath and removed some of the plastic pieces holding the bumper on. So next I can reach in and remove the actual bumper itself. You don't really have to remove the headlights but I'm going to Wiper. Remove the windshield cowl. Remove the transmission assembly for the wipers. Remove the wipers. Remove this relay box out of the way. And we can remove this tray for the wipers. Now taking a look at this engine bay a little bit cleared up here. You can see at the back here we do have this sort of brake actuator as well as this brake actuator over here because it's an electronically actuated one with your master cylinder. So we are going to have to remove this reservoir here. Uh, we're also going to move this out of the way so we can get access to the engine mount on this side. At the front here we're going to have to clear things up by removing this jug as well as the cooling fans at the front. We're going to have to move out the inverter over here as well as there's a bunch of cooling lines that go to the inverter assembly to cool things down as well as the normal cooling lines for your internal combustion engine that goes to your heater core. We're going to move this washer tank out of the way. Uh, about your 10 millimeters connect this bracket here that holds this brake reservoir. And then I can remove this out of the way. Now at the back here we've got the hybrid battery just above the spare tire well. First things first we've got to disable it so we're just going to pick up on this little tab here and then pull this piece out and that's your high voltage battery disconnected. Then we're also going to disconnect the 12 volt battery located in this pocket over here. So we'll just take this little clip out here and then this big clip here and that's it, your 12 volt battery is completely disconnected, there's no 12 volts. Next I'm going to unbolt this cover for the inverter. Alright, obviously you want to make sure the battery is already disconnected. So inside this inverter you've got the wires that go to MG1, which come up to here, so we're going to need to unbolt that. We've got the other wires here that go to MG2, which we need to unbolt and remove this plug. As well as the wires that come in from the high voltage battery. You can see there's just two of them because it's DC. The inverter actually changes it to the three phase AC that these motors need. Okay, that one just pops off. Alright, so those two battery cables are out. Next we'll work on this. We'll put this motor cable here. And we'll remove the MG2 cable. Just remove this cable here. Now taking a look at what we got with the inverter, so we've got our motor 1 connected, our motor 2 disconnected, as well as the battery terminals. I've also disconnected this harness here that goes to the computer, and this wire over here that goes to the AC compressor. So what's really left on this inverter is really the cooling system. It's got its own tank over here, as well as some lines that go into it over here, and come out from it over here, and go to this auxiliary water pump in this tank. So as far as the inverter goes, I have this cooling pipe here that goes into the coolant reservoir that's attached to the inverter. And then over here you've got another connection that goes to the other coolant jug on this side. So once those are released, I think that's pretty much it for this inverter. Now I can remove the inverter. Got the inverter out of the way from the top of the transmission really clears things up here. You can see there's actually a number of hoses here that power the cooling system for both the inverter and the rest of the vehicles. And there's also these electric water pumps. You got one here, looks like you got another one there and also one back there. Here we've got the brake actuator as well as the coolant lines that go into the heater core and the AC lines that we'll have to disconnect from the firewall. We're also going to need to drain the radiator. The petcock valve is below this water because it's a stupid design. You've got to remove this water pump here. It's got this bracket over here. In order to access the radiator petcock valve down inside of there. And you can't get it from the bottom either. There's too many cooling lines. Yeah, and of course it's going to make a mess all over the vehicle. We're going to disconnect the AC line from the evaporator here. Okay, come on. There we go. We get the other hose here. Things take you forever to drain. So here we've got the upper radiator hose. Let's break that free. No mess on this one. And then the lower radiator hose. Oh my goodness. Next, I'm going to remove the radiator support here. 
You can just pick this upper radiator support off. Working around this water pump behind the radiator is the most challenging because it not only blocks the petcock, but there's also a lower radiator hose down below it over here that I need to get to. So I'm just going to remove this entire assembly. Alright, finally that pump is out of there. Okay, hopefully I've got all the cooler hoses out and I can lift this condenser radiator assembly out of the front end. Okay, so there's some wires here I gotta disconnect from. Now I'm gonna hold this up. Oh my gosh, what a mess. Of course it's gonna make a more mess. So with the condenser radiator out of the way, it clears up the front half of the engine. But there's even more plumbing here that goes to this water pump that we'll have to take care of, as well as the plumbing that goes to the heater core inside of there. Now if I want to lift the engine out, I will have to remove this bracket which also holds the brake actuator. So which means I'll have to disconnect all that stuff. However, if I do drop the subframe, I can leave the engine on the ground and pick up the whole car and then pull the engine out. So I'll see what I gotta do. If there's one thing that's complicated, it's all these hoses for the cooling system in the Prius. Okay, this is a fuel connection. Just squeeze these two tabs and release it. So if you come up and under the glove box here, you see we've got a bunch of wires that connect to the ECU. We're gonna disconnect everything. All right, now from inside the engine bay, I can remove that grommet and pull the wires through. Alright, that way we don't have to disconnect the wiring harness from the engine when we pull it. Alright, so this is what we got looking here. All the lines and hoses that I can see at least have been disconnected all the way around the engine and the transmission. Next we're going to go underneath and disconnect the exhaust and the axles and see what to do next. Now Prius catalytic converters are extremely expensive, so it's obvious that this one was stolen fairly recently. You can see the clamp for the bolts are pretty clean as well as the bolts up at the front of the engine. So we're going to be saving this catalytic converter. So we got it unbolted here and up at the front. We've also got an oxygen sensor that runs into the cabin. Alright, we can remove that clamp. Alright, we're going to try to one hand this. Alright, I got the converter out with the mid pipe. Let's take a look underneath the Prius here. It seems like if I am able to remove these axles, which are sometimes a pain and get stuck, from both sides here, I should be able to drop the engine and transmission assembly down and sort of rotate it forward in order to clear the subframe here as long as the exhaust manifold back here will allow me to do that. So let's try that next. And that way I don't have to remove the subframe because the subframe isn't really attached to the engine mechanically other than this torque mount. Let's remove the wheel. Now I've already cheated and removed this axle nut. It's a 30 millimeter 12 point socket and you gotta use the breaker bar with the vehicle on the floor in order to release it. Should have enough space to remove this axle. So here I've got the axle removed from the knuckle. But as much as I can pry, I am on jack stands. I can't get a good angle on it to pry it out of the transmission. So I might just have to take that inner CV boot apart and then pull it out. So I've removed the axle also from the passenger side. But instead of dealing with pulling that out, I'm thinking as I release the engine down this way, I can have it drop sort of towards the front of the vehicle because there's a lot of space up at the front and then deal with the axles when it's out. Alright, so I remove these two bolts here and now the whole engine can sway back and forth because it's just resting on the two top mounts. So we're going to set up and start dropping this down. Now looking from underneath at the passenger side mount, there's two 14 millimeter nuts that I'm going to back off so we can release this mount. Alright, so over on this side, we've got one bolt that's holding this engine together. And on this side, we've just got this one bushing bolt here that's holding the whole engine together. So we're going to remove that. We're going to go ahead and release the mount. We should be free now from the engine of the car. Lower the engine. So this side is barely hanging on with my, my seat buckle here. And this side, I accidentally looped it over the wrong thing. The transmission's dropped here, so i got to retie my points while this thing is precariously hanging down. So the engine and transmission have been dropped down, however it's just sitting on the ground so I can't really pull it out without putting a dolly underneath, so I gotta do that next. Alright, so right now I've got the engine transmission assembly sitting on the dolly. We just need to lift the vehicle up and over and then we can slide the dolly out with the assembly. I'm trying to lift the car here, but I don't think this is going to be a strong enough point. I'm right, going to go ahead and lift it up from the rebar. Seems much stronger. Alright, check out how low the Prius is in the back. Yeah. Okay, so this is turning into a video on how not to remove your car engine. I'm thinking if I can push the car back that way, 
should have enough vertical clearance to reposition my crane and pick it up this way. We just need to clear this rebar over here and then we can pick it up with the crane. Please don't fall on it. Okay, so I've repositioned my jack on this side so that it's up really high. I might be able to clear the bar here so I can cherry pick this off so I'm going to lower the car down. So here we've got the engine and transmission assembly finally removed from this vehicle. This is probably not the exact way you want to remove from your vehicle, especially if you're rebuilding or replacing your engine. This is a parts vehicle after all, so I don't really care too much if things get damaged. We are going to be doing a teardown video on the engine and the transmission to see how this works later. And here's a look at the back half of the engine assembly that faces the firewall. You've got your exhaust manifold over here and the transmission, which is fairly simple. It's just got two electric motors inside. There's no extra connections to it as well as the parking pole motor that engages the parking pole. Now the next steps would be to remove the axles from the transmission as well as remove all the bell housing bolts that connect it to the engine and then put the engine on the stand. Speaking of the engine itself, this is a 1NZ XFE engine which is a version of the 1.5 Toyota motor. It actually runs on the Atkinson cycle which makes it a little bit more efficient but a lot less powerful than say a 1NZ from a Toyota Yaris. Now you can also see there's not that much accessories here, just a drive belt and a tensioner that turns the water pump even the AC compressor is electric and of course there's no alternator or starter on this setup now looking back I think I should have dropped the subframe down and then dropped the engine down as opposed to bringing the engine tumbling down on itself instead of here because it kind of got stuck in this ledge when it was coming out and I would recommend that if you were doing an engine replacement because it's going to be pretty difficult to get the engine to line back up inside of here now looking around inside of here we do have this steering rack and it's got a column mounted electric power steering motor so I want to do a video on that and we've also got Got this bar here which is kind of what prevented me from taking out this transmission and engine together upward because I didn't want to deal with that yet. And of course if you do have a hoist it makes this thing a lot easier because you can just drop the subframe down first then drop the engine and tranny down and then lift the whole car up in the air and then drag out your engine transmission combination with the engine crane. I just use the crane to lift up the rebar over here. No, this is not really a structural member. I kind of bent it up over here. So one pile of front end parts later, as well as an empty engine bay and the engine and transmission finally removed. I hope this video gives you a little bit of tips on how to remove the engine and transmission from a Toyota Prius or any similar vehicle. I think overall it was pretty straightforward other than the mess of coolant hoses and coolant that I made down there from all the extra water pump and reservoirs in this vehicle. Now make sure you follow me on Instagram to find out what the next video is going to be and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Alright, now I'm going to drop the subframe. Shoot, I dropped the subframe.